Hey, what's going on YouTube? Adam C here. Thanks for watching as always. So today's video is everybody's favorite. Uh, a full fish room tour, a lot of new stuff to show you. Um, all 10 tanks, all filled with fish. So let's do it. So you guys know the rules about when we do the, uh, the entire fish room tour. We're gonna go smallest tank to largest tank. Uh, keep in mind that a lot of these smaller tanks, they are more function over form, meaning that uh, they're here to serve a purpose. I don't care if they're great looking tanks or not. So that usually details the grow out fish. So the very first tank that we're gonna look at, uh, like I said, we'll go from 10 gallon all the way up to the 300 gallon and everything in between. First is a 10 gallon. And in here, very, very, very tiny. I have approximately 60 of the Alonicara albino flavescent. Uh, there's a picture of the breeder male right there. Um, not a lot to show you other than just <laughs> just the fry themselves. Very, very tiny. Uh, as we get going further along in this tour, obviously you'll see fish that are a bit more exciting than uh, fish that are to the size of a, a pencil eraser. Up next is this 20 tall. Not a ton in here to show you. Um, what we have is I have quite a few bristlenose plecos that I've bred here in-house. There's probably 30 in here in total. Uh, the largest being maybe, maybe an inch, inch and a half, probably that guy right there. Did not intend to breed those, it's just uh, I happened to put together a trio by accident and they go at it non-stop. So I really have more bristles pleco than I hardly know what to do with. In addition to the plecos in here I do have uh, some smaller imbuna. These are Kenya cichlids. You guys know that I'm not really super into Imbuna, but as I've mentioned in previous videos, I do have a Imbuna colony that I'll be showing you shortly. And the reason that I have the colony is purely to give me fry to feed to my predators. Uh, before you go nuts in the comments, I get it. A lot of people think that's cruel. But I'm just trying to recreate nature here as best I can. So for my predators to be you know, as, as healthy and as exciting as I want them to be, I do like to do some occasional live feedings, but only of fish that I am 100% confident are clean and healthy, meaning I'm gonna breed them here before I put them in my tank. Uh, nothing from the outside is gonna be fed to my larger, more expensive predators. And let's be honest, even though a lot of people that don't like the live feedings, um, it is entertaining, so I can't deny that that's part of it. On to a 20 long. I am aware the filter is not running. Uh, I turned it off just for the sake of this video because the pump that operates that sponge filter is super obnoxious. This tank I do have fry from my Rampochromus Esox Yellowfin. You can see some of the longer ones, that's what they are. There's probably six or seven in here. The bulk of this tank are hybrid. Uh, the male being a Chilotilapia rhodosi and the female being a Lichnochromus acuticeps. It's a very strange cross, but I do have to admit, I'm very curious what a male would look like if it grew up. So I can't rule out the fact that I might keep one or two males just to see what they turn into. Uh, the remainder will also join the Imbuna in feeding the predators. So it's a bit of a fine line as to whether I like to keep these or not. Uh, if I do keep any of the hybrids, it's just gonna be out of curiosity. I'm not going to be you know, actively selling these and letting them get circled around in the hobby because that just causes a, a whole nother list of problems. These are also not the only hybrids that I have, so you'll see what I mean soon. These are another hybrid fry that I've got here in the breeder box. I would show you guys as they're eating. These are a cross between my male Tyrannochromus nigraventor and my female Buchochromus lepturus green. And yes, it is very, very tempting to keep a male or two and see what they grow into. I think I've got 80 in here. Certainly will be an interesting cross and uh, interested to see what they'll become if I keep one or two to grow up. Next up is this 40 gallon. Uh, this has my assorted Mbuna. I think I've got 20 to 25 in here. And from what I've stated earlier, you guys probably know the purpose of this tank is purely to produce uh, Mbuna fry for me, which then I can grow up a little bit and feed back to the predators. 
I understand this tank looks like a hot mess, but in reality, I just wanted to give them enough space where they can do their own thing and not be aggressive all the time. Just with the nature of Mbuna, if you don't give them hiding spaces, you're going to have an aggression problem. The Mbuna you saw earlier did come from uh, this aquarium. Working our way up in size now, this is a 75 gallon. Again, more plants from EliteCichlids.com. This has, I believe, 12 to 15 uh, F1 Rampsochromus Esox Yellowfin, the Malawi Barracuda. You can see a few of them there. They're waiting for me to feed them, so if they back away from the glass, you may be able to see a few of them. There you go. Again, fish that were bred in here. Um, I did recently give the group to a friend of mine named Chris, and he's going to continue the breeding of those to to keep them in the hobby. I just didn't have space for them, so I moved on. But I did keep a few of these here, which will be also disseminated to some of my friends locally. On top of the Rampochromus, I still have some Mylochromus plagiotania, a few smaller ones that uh, survived the net from when I caught the rest and sent them to southeastsickles.com. So a few remain here, just because I couldn't catch them in time to ship them. Anyone that ships fish via Delta Cargo, you know that a lot of times you have to drop these fish off super early, like 5, 6, 7 in the morning. So at 5 in the morning when I was trying to net these fish, I ran out of time and uh, a few stayed back. All the remaining ones were sent to Southeast Cichlids and they'll probably sell them here before too long, I would imagine. Let's get to the big tanks. Moving on to 125 gallon tanks that are six foot long. Uh, one of two that I have here. Many of you will recognize this tank used to have quite a few Tyrannochromus macrostoma. Uh, those are fish that I also sent down to Southeast Cichlids. Again, that's been part of the process of trying to breed rare fish and get them back into sellers' hands to make the rare fish not so rare and be attainable for you know, the everyday Joe Schmo fish keeper like myself. So by selling those macrostoma to him, I do have plenty of room now that I was able to move my albino alonicar fluvescent group into here. And they are very, very skittish fish. They breed all the time, but they are skittish. There's the dominant male as well as a picture to go with them. There's all my females kind of hiding out <laughs> in those fake plants. Again, all of these plants are also from EliteCichlids.com. Custom made for exactly what I needed. I realize again that the plants aren't super common for these types of fish, but fish that are a bit more skittish, they do very, very well if you give them anything to hide behind, be it plants or rocks, anything like that. They just love it. And when they're more comfortable, they breed much more often, which is uh, the name of the game for what I'm doing here. But this dominant male is a true, true stunner. I have two males and five females in here. First Alana car group I've had in quite a while. Before we move on to the 300, this is my second 125, and I have a group of a wild Lichnochromus acuticeps, the Malawi gar in here. It's pretty sparsely decorated just because these fish like a lot of open space. Um, I just put a few rocks in there so they can have some cover when they like. This is a very um, delicate fish to handle. They aren't as, as hardy as most other fish, especially predator haps such as Buchochromus or Tyrannochromus. These guys are much more of a docile fish and they're much more sensitive to water quality than a lot of the other haps are. Thus, you don't see them very often because they're very easily killed in the aquarium, unfortunately. I do have two males and I believe six or seven females in here. There is the, the dominant male. He's about nine inch, eight and a half, nine inch, really, really nice fish, really, really expensive fish. That's just the name of the game. And also the smaller one up here. That's one that I've grown out here from about an inch. That's his second male. He's three to three and a half now. So it's nice to have a backup male just in case. These acuticeps are much less um, 
they have a lot less strength to battle anything that could go wrong as far as poor water quality, disease, anything like that. They're almost more similar to discus in that in that sense, in that it really does not take much at all for them to stop eating, stop breeding, uh, and die. So if you keep acuticeps, you'll probably already know that, that they're very hesitant to color up, and they take a bit more maintenance to keep, but absolutely they're worth it. Very, very unique fish. A nice addition to any HAP aquarium, especially a colony aquarium. These guys do very, very well when they're together. Sometimes if you see them in larger all-male tanks that, that house the Buchochromus or the Tyrannochromus, Nimbochromus, anything like that, you will see that the Acuticeps does not gain much color just because he's much more timid than those fish. The final tank for today is the 300 gallon. This is eight foot long, 30 inches front to back. And it causes me problems here and there, to be honest with you. Uh, the main problem is the Tyrannochromus nigraventor male. That's him right there. The problems he causes is, for example, I fixed the substrate less than an hour and a half ago, just for this video, to have a nice looking substrate. And within 90 minutes, he dug out his breeding pit again, uh, the size of a dinner plate in less than 90 minutes. <laughs> uh, and also with him being that dominant, another problem that he can occasionally cause is he gets slightly aggressive trying to breed with his females. So he'll pin every other fish in the tank up against the wall while he breeds with the females. But that does bring its advantages. One advantage is he looks awesome all the time, no question. And secondly is he breeds with the females all the time. So there's a holding female back there. There's really no shortage of Tyrannochromus nigraventer fry in this setup. So that's always nice. Other fish in this 300 is I do have one male, three female, Champsochromus corallius, the Malawi trout. There is the dominant male there at about nine and a half to 10 inch. Very, very good looking. I also have a group of Bugochromus lepturus green, one male, two females. The male's a bit smaller at six and a half inch. Uh, the females are not small. There's one at nine inch. The other one's hiding behind that background. Very, very cool looking fish. Uh, not easy to find, so when I can get those breeding, try to get those more common in the hobby, uh, I will consider that a success. So the plants in here, these are from EliteCichlids.com. As mentioned before, these are custom made. I would struggled for so long to find plants that reach from the bottom to the top in a tank that's over two feet tall. The reason I did want that is because I like to have some sort of break in you know, the side of view for the fish at every level of the tank. So whether it's a bottom feeder, uh, hangs out in the middle of the tank, or is a top dweller, there's always something there that they have to swim around and it provides a break in any other fish's vision so there's not always chasing 24-7 about aggression. They've got somewhere to hide. The background itself is a centerpiece from UniversalRocks.com. I really enjoy that because it's it's a nice centerpiece without taking up space throughout the entire eight foot length of the tank. This rock right there is from Universal Rocks and the remaining three, one, two, and three are from AquaDecor.com. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed the tour. Um, there's going to be a lot of further breeding and, and fish additions in the near future. I'll have an unboxing for you probably within two to three weeks of some more really, really cool fish, which I'm always excited about. Thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed, and I will see you next time.